hours, but uh, I hope he'll be done in an hour or just less. So 15 minutes before the end of two hours or the end of one? Uh, it's like 10.35 my time, so an hour and a half from now, hour, hour and a half from now, basically. Hour okay, I hope you should be fine then. Yeah. Sounds great. I mean, worst case, you know, we'll just, I'll just be yeah, and we have a slot next week if we need it to carry over, but hopefully not. Okay, uh, Militia, I think, I guess we, we probably have most people we need. Do you want to hit the start recording button? Yeah, so I hit the button. I was muted, sorry. But I hit the button. It's recording for, for, for the last 30 seconds or so. All right, great. Okay, so I hope the slides are being presented from my laptop at the minute. Uh, so we have the coordinates, which you've all managed to find. We have the note well, which I hope you've all read. If you haven't, please read it and behave accordingly. And we have the agenda. Uh, so if you can see the agenda on screen now, this is the agenda bashing session. Uh, our plan basically is just to do this, then to let Guran uh, talk about the requirements, issues, which are the ones that are in GitHub, and then chat a bit about planning for the next ITF meeting and maybe beyond. Uh, I'll just note that, yeah, we have a couple of people who want to leave after about an hour-ish or a little longer. Uh, so if we can try and run it to about an hour, I think that would be good, so people don't get tired as well. If need be, we have another slot next week that we could use if we wanted to. I hope we won't have to. Uh, so with all that, is there any agenda bashing? Okay, I don't hear any agenda bashing, so we'll go with this one. And Joran, I can present from mine, or I can try and move the bubble over to yours. Um, can can I present? Uh, well, we could give it a try. Let me see. I think I just dragged the bubble to you, which I shall try to do. So you should be the presenter right now. Right. I need to share the screen somehow. Suddenly, this changed. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I should have said that Ivalov uh, is, uh, or Ivalo, sorry, pardon my mispronunciation, has agreed, kindly agreed to take minutes, and he's taking those in the ether pads. Uh, we also have the Jabber room, which as of now has just me in it, so I guess we're not using that today. And people are using the chat in, in WebEx as well. Okay, so Goran, it's all over to you. Okay, thanks. So um, yes, Lake is about specifying a lightweight authenticated key exchange for OSCore. We're working on the requirements draft. The latest submitted version is also the adopted 0.0 version. There has been reviews by Ecker, Vala, and Kartik. And I tried to address some of those uh, comments in updates on the GitHub. And also listing some issues. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Our 10 issues um, in no particular order is high level or uh, significant architecture issues interleaved with editorials. So so we should just get to the bottom to the bottom of the list. So then we've covered uh, the important things. First issue, and by the way, um, uh, I think this is, we should, I mean, interrupt me at any time. And uh, also, the objective here would be to have a way forward for all of these issues uh, with assigning people to uh, produce some, some, something uh, that perhaps helps, helps us progress this work or uh, setting up new issues. That's, that would be, the, would be the ideal outcome of this. So we are conclude on this, um, this list of issues. Um, so the first issue is now a bit old. It's, it was discussed in the early autumn. It's the question uh, that we're having an AC Hellman change. Uh, we could either use signature-based public keys or static VH public keys. 
And static DX is much more efficient um, from message overhead point of view, which is something we are uh, care a lot about here. So the question was, could we simply skip the signature-based mode? Uh, and I think the answer we have already uh, gone some time since it, I think the answer is that we we should probably not do that. We should probably keep both both these modes. So anyone has any comment on that? Uh, I, concur. I concur. Great. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Um, uh, someone, someone is, is needing need 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 to speak. So Eric, I see I see two of you in the call. One is calling you as a two. Oh, that's, that's the problem. problem. Hang on, hang on. Great, thanks. How okay, so I guess we can close this issue then. Great. Um, second one um, is related to terminology. So we are in the draft. We're using. Uh, uh, Units on the AKA level, which called messages, and we're discussing different uh, units, frames, and packets. And the, and the objective is uh, to minimize performance impact. We look at the smallest number of radio radiolator units, uh, and we also have the fragmentation unit of co-op, which is blocks. And then we have sort of a, a more intricate discussion, um, but th th this is the basic issue of uh, of Terminology. Do you have any problem with this terminology, or can we live with that? So, so I don't think it's just a terminology issue. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, like this terminology is fine, but um, but I think that the 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 distinction I think we need to draw is um, we're going to get to some point where where we think um, and I, I hesitate to use this word, but fragmentation occurs. I.e., there's a there there's the, there are conceptual units which have to be transmitted. And then there are the actual things on the wire which are transmitted, or in the air that are transmitted, and um, and who's responsible for like doing that disassembly and reassembly is actually like not, it is actually like a relevant point in a number of ways. So um, I'm like I'm fine with the, uh, um, and so I think the, the the thing so so in particular the um so, so you're calling eight protocol units right is meant, so I guess this is what I'm trying to say at, like DTLS right. Um, um, not, I'm not necessarily one will use DTLS, but it's an analogy, right? Which is say the DTLS has flights, and then it has and it has messages in those flights, and you can send the messages separately. You can send like multiple. You can send you can send um, you know each flight as multiple messages, which then turns into um, some um, arbitrary number of um, of things on the air interface, so the wire interface. And so um, uh, I, I think. Um, and so, so not being able to talk about um, uh, and so, so sort of assuming that the uh, that the ache presents each flight as if it were a monolithic thing to the uh, to the thing below it is like is that's actually quite a, that's actually quite a constraint. Um, um, so um, I'm not sure we should be assuming that constraint. I think what you're saying, Eckert, is that we could create a protocol where um, the the frame, the forwarding, the retransmission of the frames has a security impact on the protocol that's not apparent from looking at the flow of messages. I think that's certainly true. Um, the um, so I think I think that the uh, part, I, part of what I'm getting at here, right, is um, uh, is uh, um, uh, when I was in in Imria, we had a conversation about that sort of. Uh, where it was desirable to have the uh, fragmentation and defragmentation, um, and in particular, like when like quick and DTLS were designed, there was an assumption that IP fragmentation was bad, and this um, and the appropriate location for the um, for the retransmission and for the reassembly was at, was at the higher level protocol layer, and um, and so is that is that assumption we have, um, and similarly um, is an assumption that um, and, and and in particular um, and, and contrary wise. If we look at this protocol, and this is true of, of ETLS, but it's also true of any assumption where you use um, where you use co where where um, any given uh, um, radio or um, or wire thing has to be self-contained cryptographically, is that you can burn an enormous amount of, of, of information on cryptographic overhead. So, if for instance your frame size is um, is 50 octets, 
and then you say each frame has to consist of a single um, co-op, um, you know, a, a, a co-op, which is to say OS core message, right? You just like consumes, uh, you know, like basically eight, eight, eight to ten octets of overhead. You like twenty percent of the overhead was just chewed up in integrity checks, um, and um, that's clearly extraordinarily undesirable. So I think that's that's so I guess what I'm pushing on is like is like a, is like I don't understand very well. Um, what the constraints are about map at that, but those mappings and whether you want to have representation very high up or you want to have very low. So we are we are assuming at least the co-op um, that AK needs to be transported to the co-op, so it has its uh, own fragmentation. Uh, and then I don't think we really can have any control over the radio later unit. Um, I mean, but isn't but isn't but well, well let me but let me ask you let me, let me ask you a question because. It's been quite a while since I read co-op in OS core. Um, uh, suppose that I have a situation where I have to transmit, um, uh, what would you say? Well, I, so I've got to transmit, we'll say, 150 octets, right? Um, and, um, and then my radio, my radio unit has an MTU of 50, 50 octets. Um, like, wh how, how do you believe that fragmentation happens? You could do it in uh, in co-op with blockwise, or you could use some lower layer fragmentations. I guess some of the radio technologies might have their own fragmentation or not. Okay, so, but what, okay, so there is there is a tussle um, between so co-op provides a, a, a an ordered fragment like more like SCTP than TCP, called block transfer that lets you send uh, packets that are uh, bigger than a minimum MTU um, over the network. Um, but there is what a... Is that, the OS core? That, pardon me? Is that above or below OS core? So um, that is uh, within... Um, the co-op layer, so it looks to be below OS core. Um, okay. And if, if you do co-op over DTLS, for instance, then that appears to be above DTLS, which is um, an interesting problem. Um, but there is a there is a tussle between um, should I send uh, 256 byte um, uh, um, blocks above co-app, um, which get transmitted, translated into two or three radio units, uh, or should I send 1,024 byte or 2,000 byte uh, uh, block units, which gets translated into much many, many more radio units. And there's a tussle be between the two things because of, of what, of what, of what, uh, where the retransmissions occur. And this is a this is definitely a a matter of tuning for different radios and different technologies and different network uh, um, uh, uh, topologies, um, and and I don't think that we have a, a an answer to this generically, but that it's not exclusively a security issue. Except that if you look at the different solutions, you see that the security check can't occur until you obviously have the whole piece there so that that means that a failure to mac something correctly um could cause a retransmission in a different way than a, a failure to crc something correctly right so i guess i'm just i'm just trying to ensure that we don't like i guess what i'm trying to ensure that it, my comment here was that we don't presuppose an architecture that would then result in very suboptimal tuning for some particular environment <laughs> is really all I'm trying to do, um, and yeah. because I don't understand the environments, maybe as well, I'm trying to make sure that we don't adopt terminology that presupposes that. Um, so, so, so I think I think that, that, that I think the take home, and I and I I know that Yaron and I have discussed this before, is yes, we could do something in you know three round trips, but each of those round trips would be big enough that we would ha require multiple radio fragment uh, round trips anyway. So we haven't actually optimized the radio units by making the round trip count lower and making bigger packets. We we could have multiple steps, each one is, which is shorter, and that might actually be more efficient than having fewer message round trips. 
So I think your point is well taken that I think we need to be aware of that we're always trying to optimize radio units, not messages. Uh, what I hear is that we have multiple fragmentation mechanisms available. So I wonder whether whether there is consensus that this should be out of scope of the ache. Well, I mean, I no, think so. So I, I don't is, agree. Uh, go ahead, Michael, please. I don't think that the multiple fragmentation layers should be out of scope for the ache. I think the ache needs to um, an, a, a, to be evaluated in terms of the different possibilities of those fragmentation models. The ache may actually make it provide advice, you know, make this thing bigger and uh, even though it requires uh, more lower level units or make this thing smaller and have multiple messages because it optimizes radio units, I think that the ache specifically should be aware of that and should be in scope. No, but uh, I agree with you that it should be in scope for the evaluation part, but I just wonder whether in terms of the ache design, we should provide the fragmentation mechanism within the ache. That was my, uh, that was my, that was what my comment was related to. No. So it's something but, you know, to think about during the design phase, not to build in some automatic um, thing in the ache. Yeah. I don't think we should. Map, that uh, is probably right. Go ahead. Great, you, sorry. Um, and I think we don't, shouldn't try to map the uh, messages to radio units and how that is done. But it makes sense during the design phase to look at the numbers, uh, how, how many radio units are caused by our lake, and, and then we can make decisions on that. Yeah. But, uh, so, Michael Kaisen, to, to keep in mind that Kaisen. the number of radio units is one measure another measure is for example like time to completion and they might not uh, uh, yeah they, these measures might not uh, agree always might not be correlated so can i make, can I make sure i understand um the, the, the constraint here michael um um is, is is the constraint you're you're alluding to that there are radio environments which basically um where uh you, where you can't pipeline like an arbitrary number of um uh, of of messages on the radio, and so basically, you know, you have five messages in queue, but as a practical matter, you have to send two, and then you get an acknowledgement, you can send two more, kind of thing. And so then, and so, and so basically, like the kind of the kind of flights you think about with like TCP, you don't get you like you got a much a much smaller effectively window. Your your window is often one, um, and okay. it's That's often one at a hop by hop layer. So in fact, your IP window from across six hops. It consists of of six uh, transmit act transmit acts uh, with the possibility of retransmissions or drops in between, which kills your entire transmission. So um, if you and and there's people trying to solve this and make it better and and do other things with it, but um, that's the 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 15-4 six tish environment today. Um, and it's usually driven by the fact that the devices don't have much memory for buffering of 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 forwarded packets. So even if you have two, if you have a, a convergence where you have two transmitters that transmit to a common intermediate node, that intermediate node may have network bandwidth to transmit the packets upwards, but it may only have one buffer, and so. Uh, node A and node B transmitting node C on their way to node D, um, uh, node A and B will congest each other in node C's uh, forwarding buffer. Um, and so they sit there essentially a uh, single, uh, uh, um, whatever the opposite of windowing, a single task, single threaded across the whole network because um, something ca either captures the, the transmission buffers and that's desired or because uh, and because you prefer that everyone takes the turn rather than they fight each other. Um, so that is, tip, is often the case for 15.4. Thank you. That's really, that's super helpful. I guess I, 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 I think I'm probably would drill down this too much. Um, I guess I'm um, uh, I guess I'm willing to live with messages for like, you know, for a little while, 
Um, but um, um, but let me let me let me like but like I'll, I'll take the action item to go read through this document again and like see if I think that messages is presupposing too much. And, oh. and if it is, then I'll like I'll propose a new terminology. If not, I'll shut up. <laughs> ah, good proposal. Yeah. Um, returning to your question, Malisha, about fragmentation. I think fragmentation is out of scope for the AKE. So we should discuss. I mean, during design time, we should discuss how this impacts how the AK performs as a function of co-op and the underlying radio layer, but we should not build in fragmentation into the AK. So okay, I, I agree that. Helpful, uh, I think it would be helpful if, 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 we, if we documented the thing that Michael said earlier, um, which is that you can have that, 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 the, um, that the OS core um, like conceptual unit exists above co-op, and so you can have Effectively, one OS core, um, you can have one OS core, um, whatever you want to call it, message um, with, with a single integrity check that spans multiple radio frames. And that's not a problem because that's actually a very important restriction <laughs> or non restriction. Yeah, actually, OS core can be both under and above. Uh, sorry, block wise could be both under and above OS core. But, but yes, that's, that function you, you mentioned is. is that's possible. That type of integrity. Is I mean, because because I mean, if you do block wise, if, if we, I mean, if you do it so that the that each individual block, each individual radio unit is one OS core message, then like I say, you got you have a huge amount of overhead. So we obviously don't want to do that. Um, and so I just want I, I think it's worth it's worth documenting that because it does it does actually point it does actually tell it give us a, a, a clear version of how bandwidth we have to work with. Um, but but sorry, the the AKE is not transported in the OS in OS core. So no. why does that matter here? Well, then I, for, oh, well, I think that's a that's a, a misstatement that that we're 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 just being confused. It's 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 over co-op and co-op has block mode. You're right. Um, and OS core is is what results afterwards. What? Yes. Right. Fair enough. So so we're gonna so we're gonna but so we'll, then but then we'll mean AED that this sits on top of block mode, right? That'll be that'll be the layering one and a half. Correct. So the AKE messages we might be fragmented, fragmented using the co-op block mechanism. Yes. Yeah. Right. But that, but my point being that they don't, they don't, that, that each block does not need its own integrity check. Correct. No, the there is no integrity yeah. on co in co in co-op layer. Yeah. The AKE will always be above block wise, and contra so there. That, 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 yeah. Oscore can be either below or under. Both uh, options below are or possible. Above. Yeah, or, or right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Right. But that's not relevant for Lake, I think. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think I know the text I want, um, which I don't think anybody's going to object to when I write it. So I'll, I'll, I'll issue myself an issue to, 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 to file something here. Should we close this issue or should we keep it open? Uh, I'd like to, can you assign this issue to me, but if I haven't done anything in a couple of weeks, we can close it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so I have one other question to... on, on number two. Sorry? I, I also have a question on number two. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I have hear, I only hear people who are working on TLS use the term flights. I just wanted to check, does everybody, is everybody happy with that term? Uh, or do we need to kind of define it in this document just so everybody has the same understanding? So flights is not used at all, and uh, it's, it's it basically the discussion on the mailing list and today. So I just want to check that everybody understands it the same. So as I understand it, what this document is using messages to mean what uh, what what why TLS and Quick used to mean used to use flights for. Yes. Would it be better if we used flights? Well, personally, I don't really care. I mean, it might be worth just adding in a, a sentence that says exactly what Ecker just said. Well, so I, th I think I think the reason why one might think you wanted to say flights is, and I think this is what I was sort of trying to get at earlier, is that um, uh, if you think about your typical sort of Sigma protocol, right? Um, um, where you know the where where the where the first message from the responder is a Diffie Hellman key, um, which is in the clear, followed by a um, uh, followed by like some AAD block um, of protected certificate or something like that, 
um, and then potentially followed by um, some other AAD blocks, that, um, well, either, either one or more AAD blocks that contain a certificate and then contain data, um, like calling each calling that a message, a little odd, and that's sort of why we would have this, this flight terminology, and it's particularly true if you're sort of piggybacking, um, it's particularly true if you're kind of piggybacking multiple um, application data messages on the same, um, in the same flight. So, I mean, like, particularly if you think about, like, quick, right, or, or, or TLS-1.3, you've got, like, a 0, 5 RTC mode, right? And so, like, the server can, the server can, like, stream, like, as, as many, as many application messages at once, as soon as it sends, as soon as it sends you to the Y. And so, like, there's, like, are, are there are different radio units, there are different AADs, like, totally different. They're just, like, they're sent at different times. And so, calling those messages, like, ah, they're flights. And so, like, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you want to have a system where you can't, like, do any of that stuff, then I guess, like, you know, I guess you could say messages, but it's just weird because, like, because there's, there's, like, there's no sense in which there's the same, like, transmission unit at all. They're just, they're just available at the same time. They're transmittable at the same time. So that run trip. I, I'm personally I'm fine with any, any terminology, where, whatever causes the least confusion and <laughs> people understand the best. So what do we do? Do we change the wrong terminology? You had a sentence saying that with messages we refer to what you in the well, well, so Stephen, my point was I was going to go read through this again and see if see what I thought was appropriate and 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 either shut up or make a pull request. Um, if, is, is, is that, that work for people or do people want to try to resolve it now? Good. So we we, uh, we leave this issue. Okay. No, I mean I'm. I'm, I'm I'm fine with okay. that. With the resolution for today being Ecker will uh, send it a pull request or not. Uh, I just want, did want to check that everybody had the same understanding of messages versus flights. Yep. And it sounds that I think that's true. I hope it is anyway. Well, I do wonder what terminology you what terminology one would use if you had a second zero RT if you had a second zero five RTC message that you sent. Um, it was like available was available to respond after the first message was sent. What you would call that? You'd call it a four message. I mean, I guess this gets this. I think it gets back to this point Michael was making earlier, right? About how, um, you know, how the things that in like TCP you would think of as like actually concurrently transmittable or not necessarily concurrently transmittable in this environment. <laughs> um, and so one thing to be useful be to know is are there any environments where we expect like to be used? That have like large that have large bandwidth like large bandwidth delay products um, because if there are then it's obviously extraordinarily desirable to have um, you know to, to be able to send multiple messages at the state in, in, without without intervening round trip but if we assume that every single every single environment which like we use will be a stop and wait environment then it's not a very valuable feature um, and I just don't know if other ready environments to know like is this like is this like stop and wait thing like like all of them or is it just some of them. So I forget the numbers, but I remember for Laura, there's a there's a really wide variation between very small NTUs and and possibly relatively large ones, at least on the way to their remote device. So I don't think you can say that every single thing is limited uh, to very small NTUs. So in that case, I think we probably should adopt terminology that may clear that it's possible to send multiple messages within. Um, within a given time, or a given round trip window, um, which is, I think, quite appropriate, and I'm happy to send them a, a patch for that. Okay, great. So I think the action there is uh, Ecker's going to have a look at this uh, issue and the text and suggest a, a PR or, dis or do nothing, in which case it's okay as it is, and we close it in, a, in a three or four weeks. I'm going to make a note on this issue so I, I can remember this myself. I think it's captured in the in the Etherpad as well, so it'll be in the minutes. Yeah, I'm okay, going to science myself. Otherwise, I'll forget. Great, thank you. Next one, I guess. If I can, I'll be able to. Okay, so next issue resumption. This was discussed in the face to face meeting. Um, oh, can we close? Can we can we close number one, please? Close number one. Can we actually close it? I say we agreed to close it, but we have not closed it. Um, yeah. Could someone close it? I mean, yeah. and Steve, not me. I'm not actually logged into GitHub. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so, and also, I will not be able to. Uh, uh, someone will have to sign me this issue because I'm, or because I'm not actually, a, a, you know, whatever <laughs> owner or customer.
Okay, I guess that uh, militia I can can look after the resolution of GitHub stuff. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, we discussed resumption in face-to-face -face meeting, and uh, the question is really, what should the requirements document say about resumption? Well, SCORE already provides a way to generate a new security context from an existing security context, but that does not provide perfect forward secrecy. And that's something which we think should be supported. Um, this could be by a special resumption procedure, or it could be reusing the PSK authenticated mode of the AKE. So the question is, what should, should we say anything about this? On what le level should we specify this in the requirements document? Uh, and should we have a special resumption procedure or not, if, if we specify it? So, Yaran, I think the, the proposed resolution goes a little bit into the solutions, uh, solution space. So, my personal take with chat, chat, Chair Fatal is to we should uh, essentially just specify whether we, we do want the session resumption procedure within the ACE or not, and uh, without going into the solution space. Okay, thanks. Other comments? I agree. I concur with that. I think something like this is necessary to do uh, um, frequent uh, DP Hellman to get PFS with uh, some intervals without having to use a full handshake. Isn't it? Right. It's it's worth noting, I think that the um, that the actual uh, the thing we're defending here um, is both PFS and PCS, yeah. and we should probably make, make that note um, because as you, as you as you know um, with uh, uh, um, with like the kind of resumption style that um, uh, that, that that like this TCP crypt or or one TLS one three uses, um, you actually can get PFS even without a Diffie Hellman round, but you can't get PCS that long. Be good to document. Yeah, I guess on a high level, the requirement is PFS and PCS lightweight uh, and frequently. But in practice, it's probably resumption with the PSK. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay. And who wants to write this? Anyone? Any volunteer? John is a volunteer. I'm willing. I'm willing to volunteer. Okay. okay. So Eker. Um, but we'll just need again, like, please, for the love of God, you got you got to sign me things, or I will not do them. <laughs> Next. So there's been some discussion about key separation, and again, the question is, what should the requirements documents say about key separation? Um, we we definitely need to have, or I mean, the solution typically would would have um, key separation between the ACH messages and the OSCORE messages, between keys used for resumption and, and traffic keys. Um, so that that's sort of the general question: what what should the requirement document say? And then we have the particular question: do we really need separate keys for what we call application data in the ACH? So the planned applications to use with so-called application data is currently it's limited to uh, things related to transporting authorization and certification, certificate related information. And the, the typical use case is the zero touch setting in the figure here below where you start, you have an, um, an, an AKE which is augmented with uh, authorization information going to a trusted third party, an authorization service to get uh, authorization information with which you could do uh, authorization already in the second message. And then you could uh, optionally add, add an enrollment protocol after that. So basically, uh, that's the question. Do we really need um, separate keys for this type of data? Well, I mean, so, so, I mean, so I would have called that part of the ache, right? Um, I mean, like that particular information. I mean, like if you think about how you'd handle that, you know, in 
in one of the protocols you typically design, we call that ache information. Um, yeah. And like it, like for instance, in TLS, you just have that in extension. So I think like I think having that in like the you know having that in the same key material is like fun. Um, um, I think the really relevant question though is, do we want zero five RTC data? Like, do we want like the do we want the server to be able to send application traffic um, upon receiving the first message? That's the thing I think needs key separation. Yes, definitely. So so the AD three here is not intended as the uh, sort of the starting of the traffic of the encrypted traffic. That's not the intent here. Okay, so so in if you wanted zero five RTC data, what you would do is you would just stream, you would just start streaming OS core messages at this, at this point in the game. Yes, you would send okay. them at the same time. Yeah, that would be separate. Uh, so okay, so, right. So no, so I think I think that so in that case, like I think that I think like this is like I think this is part of the ache. Um, um, so um, that, I think the thing that like I just misunderstood like what you were what you had in mind here. Yeah, I mean the application data. We have been. Do we have a better name for yeah, the application data than this yeah. question? I mean, you call it extension, and yeah. when we wrote extension here, people got nervous. We had we had the word extension. Sure. Previously. People got sure, nervous yeah. and thought that you will send general. Uh, this would be a huge framework with lots of extensions. So that's why we don't use that term. But maybe we, we need to find a better term. Um, okay, but what, what, do we agree at least on the yeah. on the content, and then we can try to yeah. find out a good term. The requirement offline. documents right now says that the AK shall be able to transport application data, or what does it? Yeah, say? yeah, yeah that, that's maybe too, too general. Too general. Okay. What 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 would the argument be for the keys to be the same as for resumption? Oh, oh sorry, you're going back to the general question. Uh, that, that, relate, that that doesn't relate to the discussion of application data, uh, right? Okay, so so I'm just um, the general general statement above is just that there are certain keys that needs. I mean, one way of handling uh, secrecy is is that you separate keys in general. Right. So in the diagram below, the blue arcs are to the extent that some of them are encrypted and some of them are not are encrypted with a different key than the red arc, the red arc at the bottom. No, they are not. Right. The point the point would be that they, they need not be because this is in some sense part of the ache. Okay. Um, okay, so I, I guess I'm... So for the general, I mean, the, we haven't talked about the general question. We, have, we started with a particular question. I think unless people disagree, we will try to find a different name for application data. We will explain what what content is, and we will argue that they don't need separate keys. That is a particular. Yeah, question. I think maybe like maybe like auxiliary data or additional data or one of those terms, like one that implies that it's somehow associated or associated that it implies that it's part of the ache. I think is the term I would use because like I think application data is like the messages I then find the transmitter over OS core. Yeah, um, yeah, I understand the confusion there. Yeah. Auxiliary data is good. What what other proposal do you say? Auxiliary or? I think I had a, I had associated. Associated. Um, so, you know, I mean, these are all these are all the same kind of general concept. Like that they mean they're they're part of it, right? Um, yeah. Um, okay. And in particular, I think that the, re the really critical part, like the thing, the thing that you want, I, the, the thing I think is like that. The, not only is it okay to have them be under the same key material, they need to be under the same key material because because what you because what you want to do is you want to make assertions about the security of the um, you know uh, uh, you want to make assertions you know um, you know crutch, Kennedy style assertions about the um, about what the, what the output of the ache tells you and what the meaning of the, what they, they, they call the session ID is right and, and having those all be like tied like somehow tied together is attractive. Yeah, from that perspective. Good point. Okay, so let's go to the general question then. Um, do we need to specify anything about key separation in the requirements document, or is that sort of follows from the other requirements? That's a, this is more like a solution um, statement. I don't know. I mean, this is. What, so, what, so, so, as I understand it, as I understand it, the way this is we're supposed to conceptualize of this is this is supposed to be like. A UC style system, right? Where we have, you know, a um, where we have a, a, a where this just pops out like a session ID and some keys, and then those get imported into OS Core, right? That's like, like, do we say that somewhere? Like, is that the, is that that's what gives you key separation? Um, yeah. 
Um, so I think if, I think if we just say, I think, right, I mean, I think saying that that's the model, I think it's a key thing. And I, 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 I apologize. I can't remember if it says that really clearly, but if it does, I think we're fine. So what we, what we say is we list the type of, the type of input OSCOR needs. We don't specifically state the properties of those secrets. Right. So but I think we do need, I mean, I think, you, I think we should document that those have to be cryptographically distinct from the key material that is used to protect the egg itself. Isn't that handled by another issue where we discussed the MAC length? Yeah, we come to that. Yeah. Uh, didn't you expand that to discuss all the input to all score? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, it's actually tied to another issue also. But let's, let's note in this, uh, for this issue that we will add the separation between the AKE. Um, what about other separation properties? Do we need to? And I can do that. So we can. I can have that as an uh, assignment. Do we need other key uh, separation? I mean, I'm not really aware of any. Um, I mean, obviously, we we'll want to be able to say that the. Um, yeah, I'm not really aware of any. Okay, so let's leave it at that. Any more comments on this one? So next, um, yeah. So there are two issues also related here um, about post. There is number five and number seven. Um, let let me start with number seven. So. This is a question about extensions and also what we need to write in the requirements about extensions. The current version does not target PAIC or, or post quantum. We want to allow that in a future extension. And the question is, how do we formulate that? Uh, some extens extensions are already built in through COSI. So we get new, I mean, new algorithms, new certificate formats, new schemes. Uh, that's that's basically um, already covered, but we, we want to say something about extensibility. And this is what we say. So we say it's desirable that the ache supports uh, some kind of extensibility, the ability to later include new ache modes, such as PAIC, uh, nodes supporting COSI, et cetera. Uh, and then there is a statement about um, complexity here, or uh, simple, be taken to avoid feature creep and extensions working against this. So the question is, do so I don't think this is. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I'm done. Okay. So I don't think this is quite the right principle. I think it's close to the right principle. Um, I think the principle I would espouse here actually is somewhat different, which is the um, the one that like you would typically hear in like C++ or Rust, which is pay for only what you use. <laughs> um, How would you formulate uh, it? Um, I mean, so, so the, point, the point being, like, that the pro I mean, the, like, like, there's obviously a certain amount of complexity included with, like, having to do a, um, having, having, having to support, you know, a pay, like, a PQ and not PQ and, and multiple curves, that kind of stuff, right? And I think that the, the, uh, um, the, uh, the, 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 the principle here is, like, not, like, make something which cannot possibly be extended, um, but make something where when you have extensions and you don't want them, not costing you. <laughs> um, so if you don't want PQ, I shouldn't pay. I, I'm not. I shouldn't be paying a constant price to have, have PQ, to, so other people can have PQ. <laughs> um, that's basically the thing that I think that the, that the, the principle is about here, rather than the principle being sort of, um, like sort of like parsimony. Yeah. How do we formulate that? Um, I don't know, but I'd be willing to try. <laughs> so, so uh, I don't see that as I, I agree with you. Pay for what you're using. I think that's a really good principle, and maybe that's the right words to use. Um, to my mind, the, the the cost of the extensibility is not in whether in the encoding or 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 that the user needs to pay for it. My mind, the the cost of the extensibility is in the node that does not re support it that receives uh, a message that includes the extension um, and discovers that it can't proceed because there's nothing that's compatible with it, and and then we get into the question of well, 
is this the result of a bid down attack or something? Um, and uh, what does it do? Right. It's the it's the uh, what does it really mean to have version 2.1 of a protocol? Uh, why would we why would we bother with the point one if if the extension was upgrade was 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 tolerated by 2.0? Um, and that's where I think we get into trouble, and we get into trouble regularly in the IETF with with not planning for the upgrades and extensibility ahead of time, or putting too much planning in for it, paying in advance, uh, paying in advance when we shouldn't have. It sounds like you have some ideas, Michael. Do you want to get a crack at this? Um, on well, the requirement side, it. yeah, I'll. Well, you can assign. Someone can assign it to me. I have. Okay, so let's write down in the minutes that Michael would take a look at this issue. Okay, great. Um, then going back to issue five, which is basically just the question about PQC. Maybe this is actually the same. Well, this is this is this is the question. Do we need a different statement about post quantum? So what we say is that we, we seem to agree that this is out of scope for this version, but. I'm not sure if we agreed on the formulation on how we're going to support it in a later version. I think this text is um, is good. Um, um, I, mean, I think I guess I guess like like what would what would it mean? I guess the, the this is about I think Michael's point actually is what would it mean to to say it might be supported in a later version, um, namely. Uh, um, do, do, does it mean that we should be able to automatically discover that? Like that, you know, if we have two, if we have two, two people that do not do, to do like one and like one does not have post quantum. And then we add do like 1.1, whether it's like an extension or a new code point number or whatever, like, should they be able to automatically discover that fact or should they just be like, ah, we're dead. <laughs> like that, that, that seems like actually the relevant, the relevant point for any of these things. Yeah. Okay. And, and not just post quantum, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we could leave this text here and then um, just update the extension text, uh, which was the previous slide. That works, that works for me. Okay, no objections? No objections, so I think we can close this issue and then focus on issue number seven. Very good. Then we go to number six. Uh, this is also editorial more, or, or I hope, I hope. Um, so we have a listing of specific attacks uh, in, in the section on mutual authentication. This was rewritten based on, on uh, Kartik's latest input. And, and um, yeah, I just wanted to check if people have any objections to this. We are basically, we are listing a set of attacks here. Um, and this list, could be longer or it could be shorter. Um, are we happy with this set? Yeah, this seems fine. Any objections? But the question is whether we can all be exhausted with this uh, with this text, or this should be just named as examples. Whether we need to be exhausted, I'm not sure we need to be exhausted either. Whether we can be. Whether we can be. Um, yeah, that's uh, by the way, on the chat, uh, it was written that for issue number five, uh, the person is wondering if Kartik is happy. With five? Uh, okay. Yeah. So if Kartik is happy with five, great. Then we have this question for, for oh, issue. Yes, I missed that, I'm sorry. Yeah, this kind of, by the way, this is Karthik here. This looks kind of okay to me. Good. Okay, so we stick with the previous conclusion on closing the issue and focusing on issue number seven, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Good. Moving to eight and nine. So this has been a discussion. This is <clears throat> issue nine. It's related to what we spoke about earlier here. Uh, what are the properties? Uh, what are the requirements of the AKA compared to to the OSCORE. score. So we already have a statement uh, in section 2.4 that we should be able, 
to support different uh, AAD MAC algorithms for AKEM and OSPO. Uh, and one question is, uh, what other highlights uh, should we highlight other related security problems, for example, uh, on the HKDF? Or, and also here comes the, 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 um, the relationship of the master secret and its, its dependence on, on AKE secrets and, and connection IDs. So that's issue number nine. Oh, yeah, okay, go ahead. No, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you weren't like, going to let go ahead. I think they're both good, so lay them both out. Did you want to say something? Uh, no, I think you, you were going to like lay both. I didn't really, I thought you were pausing. So what about it? Now I realize you're laying out both issues. Why don't you lay them out together? Because I think they're good, they're, good, they're good together. Okay, so number eight is sort of the basic question of what integrity do we require for the AKE? And there is there obviously a trade-off with overhead here. If we want to have a full strength integrity check, that's, that's certainly adding, uh, preventing certain certain frame sizes to, to uh, as transport, at least transport in one frame size. So that's, that's basically the two issues. And uh, yeah, go ahead. So, so I, guess I, 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 think, I, I think there are perhaps, um, you know, two, uh, um, uh, there are two related issues, but I think not, not, not the same. And I know Karthik has a thought of this too, so like I'm, I'm going like to defer to him in a moment. But um, there's like the question of should you be able to support um, different uh, algorithms as a general matter, and there's a question of should we be able to support like different strength algorithms. Um, and given that basically, um, I think that like given the way we've constructed these by and large, um, I don't think it's necessary to um, like as a general matter support like you know HKDF with like SHA-256 on you know um, on uh, uh, on the AIC. And then support you know HTTP for shot three or four. I'm like I'm like OS core. That seems like Mac that kind of not very helpful. Um, and like really look at like quick that doesn't do that for instance. Um, but I think what is important is um, given that we want to cut some corners on the strength of the cryptographic of like the cryptographic algorithms in the sort of um, application data transport that, that does not does not compromise the security of like the you know of the AIC itself. That you want to be able um, that the guarantee you want is that like essentially no matter how compromised like like at the end of the day, you could like negotiate like null encryption on for like the application data, and like the ache was an ache would like guarantee that happened and not not give you Byzantine attacks. And that's the requirement that I think has to has to work. Um, and I think given that as a practical matter, you end up. Um, so I think like there are multiple sort of ways to do that, but I think the way to phrase the requirement is that um, that the ache must be like. The ache must have a minimum security level for its own negotiation, regardless of what of what it negotiates for OS core. And that's the requirement. Is that, is that is that more or less match your, your theory? I think yes. So as as far as possible, if you can uh, separate out the um, and provide sort of uh, guarantees for the handshake, which are completely independent of uh, transport layer concerns. That simplifies modularity. Modularity improves for the ache much, much more. So, um, so the integrity guarantees. So I don't know about the integrity guarantees, but um, certainly we. It would be nice not to rely on when even. Well, yeah. So to be able to state the uh, the guarantees for the handshake independently. Um, but that is that's a different. Uh, I mean, the independence is one thing, and then the overall. Um, it is something else, isn't it? I think it's clear that they should be independent. I, mean, I don't know. Full strength integrity check here is not really well defined. What the full strength? No, I was not trying to say that. I was not trying to say that as the requirement that I wanted to write down. Um, um, <laughs> I mean, I think that the like so. So I think that, like the relevant point I think is like if you go back to like you know go back to like the beginning of time and you look at, like SSO version two. Right. Um, I guess little version two did not have like an independent um, like handshake integrity check, and the consequence was that like if you had if you negotiated like a super weak cipher, then like basically you had horrible bid down attacks. And so I think the the property we're trying to get at is like that if we hypothesize that like that like that, that you that you that you don't want to have the security the minimum security of the ache constrained by the minimum security of the um of of, of the negotiated um. Uh, uh, traffic algorithms, because traffic algorithms, we know we want to we be able to have a weaker traffic algorithm. So speaking concretely here, I mean, 
for the application data, we might be okay with like an eight byte tag for the integrity of application data. But for the handshake messages, we may in fact want say a full HMAC or something. It's very possible that uh, the requirement that we put on the handshake integrity is strictly stronger than uh, than the integrity checks that we, have, we get from OSCO and uh, things like that. So, so we have one. And uh, so this is Michael. So uh, I, um, I guess I'm a little bit surprised by this desire to change things. It sounds very Ike IPsecish, and and that was driven primarily by the belief that the book, uh, that the cost of doing um, uh, uh, some of the you know in the olden days of doing triple des on 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 uh, in hardware for the book bulk data was high enough that it was uh, worth having different algorithms negotiated for the bulk data than the than the ache um, but I, I don't I, I can't imagine that to be the case from the devices that I think we're targeting that they either can do certain things or they can't and that they that there's not really a lot of differences um, but the business about how many bytes of integrity is almost a network optimization rather than a compute optimization. Um, and is that not sort of the difference between the different SHA-256 uh, truncation modes? Is that, that not, am I not wrong, am I wrong here? Um, so I think the issue in this case, right, is that the, um, is the extent to which, um, if you look at a typical Sigma protocol, the identity misbinding defense um, to a great, the greatest extent, depends on security than integrity check. And so, um, if you have a very, very short integrity check, then your identity misbinding defense is much weaker. And right. so, truncation. Um, and so, like, I think that, that's, I think that, that's, that, that's the kind of concern that I, that I have. Um, Karthik, I think, can also um, may, may have other examples you want to use. But, 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 but is there is there a strong requirement that people would like to have further truncated um, uh, OS core integrity check? That's what I think I'm hearing is that I don't think we would ever want to truncate the ache's integrity check for the reason you just gave. Uh, we would want to use the full strength of the algorithm that we bothered to spend the compute cycles to do. Um, but I guess it makes sense that you might want to truncate it for the for the the bulk data uh, for network simply because of network byte count. Um, the bulk data is out of scope here. For the handshake, looking at uh, the 45 volt LoRaWAN, certain LoRaWAN networks, and also 60 with the 5 hot topology, I think both end up with the 45 byte um, uh, uh, payload size or frame size for the for the AKA, and then. With this restriction, I think it's hard to make a PSK or AKA with um, with the 16 byte authentication tag. I think you're basically forced to use a 64 bit authentication if you want to do flight in this message. Otherwise, it's so. Really so I, I, yeah. I, I, you said that the the bulk is out of out of scope, but I see <coughs> point issue nine asking the question. Exactly that question. Maybe I don't understand the issue, but that's what I see the issue. So then you're asking, you're saying, in addition to that being too big, you also think that the full size is too big for the the ache as well, which is point, which is issue eight. Yeah, I uh, guess uh, one way I would phrase this is that of course we want to trade off overhead versus security here and find the right balance point. That's for sure. The only uh, I think at this for this at this stage for the requirements, the only thing to kind of recall is that uh, the handshake integrity is its own thing, and that it may have a slightly different security requirement than whatever it is that we're providing for the application data on the side uh, of the AKE or as on the on the side of uh, even on the side of Oscar. So uh, just just because some particular tagging mechanism is sufficient for protecting application data, we shouldn't assume that that will also be sufficient for handshake integrity because it has a different requirement. And I think that's kind of enough. We don't, I mean, of course, 
it may end up being the case that we use the same length of tags for everything and, and so on, but uh, this, uh, this, this appears in a different place in the proof and has a different requirement. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only point I think that is, uh, so that is I tend to it. agree with Katik. I tend to agree with Katik. Katik, would you be willing to take the lead on this issue and propose the for, uh, formulation? Yeah, I can try to I can try to clarify that. I mean, again, okay. we don't make decisions here, right? It's just clarifying what requirements may be needed. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So let's try down in the minutes that Kartik will take the lead on this. So, um, Kartik, for for my information, what what do you see is the process related to arrive at the numbers here for the ache? Right. So, um, uh, it will basically be that how many connections. I mean, after a certain number of connections, you're going to start getting collisions on uh, on the uh, the handshake tags, and you're going to have to make a decision on whether that number of connections is acceptable and it's compatible with the with the similar kinds of bounds that we are accepting in other parts of the protocol. Uh, the uh, the the kinds of things that you do for AED teams, for AED tags is kind of different from the thing that you do for the MAC in the Sigma protocol. So they are. That's all. Thanks. So this is some. This is an input we would then uh, try to get as part of the design, the protocol design. Uh, but we don't need to have it right now. Okay. Is that is my conclusion right? That we 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 can, as long as we um, allow different algorithms and different strengths. Uh, that's sufficient for. Um, yes. I think we may actually have, well, I mean, I think we're going to have to at some point try to provide some sort of rubric for how one makes that decision, because otherwise, like, otherwise there's like a real temptation to like just shrink this number down to zero, which will obviously make the protocol smaller. <laughs> um, and so like, I think at some point, we're gonna have to, so I'm not quite sure what the answer is, but I think we can, like, we, we won't be able to leave it like completely out of scope, but I think we can probably like, we, we, uh, I don't know. Car I think. I, I think. What, what, why don't we start by having Karthik write down like how one reasons about this, and then we can figure out from there like how we, we actually write down. <laughs> like, like once we know how to reason about it, then we can figure out what we have to like put in those requirements. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Then need uh, some negotiation protocol to determine the second set of algorithms. The, the negotiation. So, yes. That's basically. Um, the next, the last issue here, actually. Oh, okay. um, but it's, it's right. But that um, basically what we are saying is, our, I'm, okay, I'm left the issue now. But what we are saying is that we are requiring negotiation of both AIC algorithms and OSCORE algorithms. That, that's already included. Uh, that should also include the length, length of. The, um, of the integrity and what we another thing which uh, I, I, I brought up was that if these multiple types of credentials, we may also need to, to to support negotiation of those. Sorry, sorry, Klaus. Did that answer your question? And we were done with the other issue, I think. So this this is the last. And I think there is. I, had, I didn't have any objection to this. Um, anyone has any comments on? Uh, if we allow the community, we also should support the negotiation, at least a way to verify that they're using the right, the intent. Yes, quite so. Okay, no objection to this, then uh, this needs to be formulated. So that's an action. Uh, I can take that action. Okay, so let's write down the minutes that Joran will take issue number 10. And then we're done. Okay, so oh. that, those Fantastic. are all the issues, I suppose. Okay. Steven, you, did you want to, to lead the chair slot on the next step? Sure. Um, assuming my audio out is working again. Uh, yes, it does. Grant. Uh, so I guess the, so we have a bunch of actions. Uh, 
probably this will take uh, you know, a couple of weeks for people to work on things. Uh, then we want to get another version of the this draft out. Uh, just as a reminder to people, the idea with this draft is not to turn it into an RFC, but that it should just we we we'll probably run a working group last call, uh, and then park it, and then uh, and so my question for now is. Do people have suggestions or do they just want to start thinking about how do we proceed after we think we're that this draft is stable, which is not today, but uh, assuming that we can get to where this draft is stable enough and the working group are happy enough with us, how do people suggest we want to proceed thereafter? This is not something we need to decide today, but I just, I, I'm curious if people have thoughts about how best to do that. My car is about to be here, so I think I'm going to have to think about it rather than actually say anything meaningful. Sure. Um, I, I guess this is something that I would, I would, I would like us to have make some progress on, even if we haven't finished, uh, you know, in the time frame of the next ITF meeting. Uh, there are some options, Stephen. Maybe we don't understand the question or the so, form of the answer. I have, oh. a, I have an idea here. Would Would it be reasonable? You said three weeks or so for doing the uh, completing the assignments and if we then could have another round um, over mail and, and if there are no more issues could we then be finished is that is that a reasonable I mean with with go for working group last call yeah sure yeah my, my question was really the next step after that mm -hmm. um, okay, sorry sorry so, yes, yeah, so let's assume all that happens really nicely and everybody's happy with this requirements document and uh, we all turn up in Vancouver and we say, hey, we're, we think we're nearly done with this requirements document. What would people like to do next after that? So, I mean, this, this just reminding people that this is uh, a long overdue process. We, we wanted to have a solution to this problem for, for a long time. And we've basically discussed this for a year. I, I'd like to progress as soon as possible to discussing solution candidates and and uh, according to the schedule of the milestones. I think that that would be the next, next step. Present op alternatives, discuss different solution candidates in Vancouver, and then move on from there. Okay, are there other, uh, Ecker obviously has, uh, and I think fair, entirely fairly said he wants to think about it, that's fine. Are there possible ways forward after we have kind of gotten to a working group consensus on the content of the requirements? Okay, if not, then I think that, uh, so we have, I mean, I guess, you know, Ecker, I presume, and the people working on CTLS will need to think about it. The people who are working on uh, uh, previous things are, are all ready to, and, and you know, uh, dying to get started. Uh, and we don't have any third suggestions that I can hear today. Um, so we put that in the minutes and we'll see what people on the list make of it. I'd just like to add the reason why we are stressed here is that people want to deploy OSCOR uh, with the key exchange protocol, and that's I mean, customers and, and partners. So, so it's, we don't see any real um, option to wait, even though we could spend a lot of time on, on uh, thinking about nice protocols here. Sure, that's, that's partly, I understand the, 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 the press, and it's partly why I brought it up to start people thinking about it. Uh, Okay. I know I'm going to have to get out of here. Yes, yeah, sir. I note in the chat. Okay, thanks, Eric. I note in the chat that uh, there is a question about camp, or, or some, someone wonders if, if we need to discuss camp. Uh, that was me, and I think we I think we resolved that as part of. Well, I assume that when Karthik said he was happy with issue five, okay. that meant we didn't need to, to process that further. Good. In general, it's always nice to restructure things in terms of more general mechanisms and specific development case things, but at this point, it's not necessary. Yet. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, so we have uh, one other agenda item, which is any other business? Hackathon? Question about the next interim or the next virtual interim?
Sure. I think virtual interim, we, we, I don't think we need next week um, unless somebody wants to contradict me. Um, right. So we won't have the next week. But, uh, if, if we want another one before Vancouver, we can organize that on the list. Um, does that answer you, Sean? It does. Thank you. Great. And Michael, uh, did you have a concrete proposal for hackathon type things to do in Vancouver? Or do you want to you know, think about it and, and propose something on the list? I don't have anything concrete to propose because we're not at that point. Um, but I wanted to ask. Sure. Yeah, maybe maybe, yeah, that might be might, maybe more for the summer ITS. That might be the thing to think about, I guess. That works for me. Okie dokie. And with that, thanks to our minute takers and if there's no any other business, which appears to be the case, I think we're done. So thanks everybody for turning up, and we'll take a bunch of actions and talk to you on the list. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.